Sheila, it was um, almost 55 years ago. Next month, wow. uh, July, it'll be 55 years ago. Oh, wow. 50. Yeah. Yeah. 55 years ago uh, that I took that really silly dive into shallow water and and didn't check the bottom. You know, you're a teenager. You think you can, you know, do anything you want to do sure. and you don't really appreciate the risks you take. And then suddenly through a reckless dive into shallow water, you crunch your spinal column and sever it and become, a, you know, a quadriplegic, no hands, uh, use of hands or legs. And, and suddenly your life is just broken. What can I say is absolutely down for the count, decimated, falling face flat on the floor, broken. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just catapulted into depression and and couldn't understand why a good God would allow something so awful to happen to such a young Christian. In fact, a Christian who just, what, months earlier had asked for a closer walk with you, Lord Jesus. I would wow. love to be drawn closer to you. And, and then I end up breaking my neck. And, you know, Sheila, I, forgive me, but I think that's one of the reasons I resonate with you. Because you understand brokenness. Yeah. I remember something you once said. Oh, and correct me. I don't have the right words. You talked about when you were in that psychiatric institution. You were flat face down on the floor. And you said something to the effect that God met me on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just bet every one of our viewers have been there. Mm. Or maybe they are there. And... There's nothing more sweet, tender, near, real than finding the God of the universe down on the floor with you. I know. Or sitting next to you in the chemo chair at, in the cancer clinic or mm -hmm. in the rehab center learning how to write and type on a computer keyboard with a stick between your teeth. I mean, there's nothing more wonderful than seeing Jesus in your utter utter weakness. But you helped me understand that because I was speaking once at one of your retreats and we were just grabbing a moment backstage, just the two of us. And you said something to me that I have never forgotten. You said, um, we are both handicapped, but it's just easier for you to forget that you are. You know, you made this profound statement that because of your physical limitations, you don't get to forget. And honestly, Johnny, I think I that was think a marker in my life. A, yeah, thank you. And that, I think that is a good thing that I am forced daily to recognize my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, I wake up in the morning and I've told you this before. I, I am so utterly overwhelmed with one more day of quadriplegia, one more day of somebody giving me a bed bath, doing my toileting routines, wiping my backside, wiping my drippy nose, brushing my teeth, feeding me breakfast. It's just, Jesus, yeah. I do not have the strength for this anymore. But you do, and I can do all things through you as you strengthen me. It's my mantra, yeah. and I think it is anybody. It should be anybody's mantra. It's a, that wonderful verse from Philippians. We cannot survive on our own strength, and so God is constantly um, forcing weakness and disappointment or uh, immense difficulties upon us so that we might see that the weaker we are, the harder we have to lean on Jesus. And I don't know, the harder we lean on him, the stronger we discover him to be. And that is such a good thing.